J.K. Woolfolk. Welcome to Kickback Chats. Now we're going to be doing something different. A special series of shows to touch on a upcoming proposal. One I know is a game changer, a winner. One that will shift the course of West Blue. So kick back, get comfortable, relax as we dive into the Heritage West Biotech Research Park and all of the juicy details. All right, Mr. Turner. The question on everyone's mind is who is Clifford Turner? Well, Clifford Turner was born in 1951. All right. Yes. And <clears throat> I grew up in the West End. I was born and raised at 4500 Grand Avenue, right down from Chickasaw Park. I've had a lifelong experience Chickasaw Park and Shawnee Park. Been very active in that activity for pretty much all my life. And I've always been around and, and stayed close to that vicinity. I went to Flagey High School. After that, I went to Eastern Kentucky University. And I was very proud of not only Flagey High School because it was right across the street from Flagey Field where I used to watch Paul Harnon and some of the other folks always wanted to play football there. Ended up uh, going there and then got a scholarship to Eastern Kentucky University and I made all America at Eastern Kentucky University in football and and primarily from uh, some of the things in which I've been involved in. It, and it was just uh, a, a, a mystery because when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, you know, they was talking about me and my wife had to nudge me and say, you know, that's you. <laughs> so, well, I didn't know who they were talking about. <laughs> One of the things that really incited me and I'll never forget it. There was a gentleman, I'm sure you remember, Leo Lesser. And during that time, it was open housing. Martin Luther King came to Louisville. I'll never forget it. He was at West Chestnut Street Baptist Church. People were hanging out the windows. And when he came, we left there and went to out on, on uh, Preston Street. And we were marching. And someone threw a brick at Dr. King and it hit Reverend Lesson in the head. That brick fell down and it hit my shoe. My father put his trench coat around me to protect me. I'll never forget that. And if I go on and on and on, let me just tell you, that same corner where that brick hit my shoe and hit Dr. King, last year, the mayor appointed me to the planning commission. I was the only African American for four and a half years on the planning commission. But that block, I had to approve that block where, that, where they threw that brick for redevelopment of that whole area, including that block, for the advancement of upscale housing. I had to exit there. And I went into the restroom during that period of time before they called on me to give testimony at that time. And I looked in the mirror in tears was just coming down on my face because I remember that time when Dr. King was there and the, the police had to come around and protect us because they called us everything up under the sun. They were spitting on us. And I was just a little lad at that time, but I had to be the one to decide and vote, to break the tie to approve that development on Preston Street during the open 
open housing scene. So that was uh, really unique as I came up through the struggle. Of course, I was president of the Louisville NAACP, uh, probably one of the youngest presidents at that particular time. And then I came on, I was president of the Louisville Real Estate Brokers Association. We did some very unique things during that period of time. As I came up, uh, we had a real unique experience because when I got my degree, I came and I worked at Jefferson County Government. And that was real an experience because I was over planning and research. Pretty much all of the development at the uh, Corrections Department, I wrote those one year. Uh, it was during the period of time when Walter Mondale was running for president and I brought him in and it was called Voices from Behind the Walls, that's what it was. And during that period of time, Dick Hatchett was mayor of Gary, Indiana and we brought him to Louisville and it was a debate in front of the corrections, in front of the inmates. So that was a launching pad where I was able to get some national attention during that period of time because Walter Mondale and, and he was running for president. Dick Hatchett was one of the most prominent Democrats in this country at that time. So that kind of started my political destiny. I was leading up to the point of being president of the largest African American Trade Association in the world. And that was the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. But prior to that, it was real unique because I did some very extraordinary things. I went to South Africa. I was just, you know, Ill. and I went to South Africa and I wanted to speak in Parliament during the period of time when Nelson Mandela had just got out of prison. You remember during that time. And he asked me to come and speak because he had heard about me. He had heard about some of the experiences in tax credits and how wild that particular creation of financing was. And I saw how that country was being raped. And when I say raped, People were coming in, taking out all the diamonds and this, that, and other, and weren't paying me anything. And then the people who were working in those diamond mines had to walk through all of that, that um, investigative stuff that it sprays all over you and, you and it goes throughout your whole body. And if you were fine, find out that you had a diamond, then they would pro prosecute you. So I went in. And I had written up this uh, thing under the auspices of uh, the National Association of Real Estate Broker. I took a, a, a lot of people with me, an entourage, and I kind of led that entourage. And I spoke in Parliament about the fact that they need to consider a tax program to tax all, and the major investor was Ford Motor Company at that particular time. So I went in there and I was speaking in Parliament and I talked about how it has transformed neighborhoods in the United States. They had never heard anything about that, that detail. And I had gotten into all of that. And I've got a picture of this man crying and it was Nelson Mandela. That man hugged me and he said with tears in his eyes, thank you for helping my country. I was uh, transitioning to the presidency of the oldest and the largest minority trade association in the world. I took the oath of office in uh, California. I was in L.A. and they swore me in. One of the most unique experiences I've ever had because Bill McEnulty, the highest ranking black official in the state of Kentucky, 
came out there and he swore me in. A lot of people had questioned whether or not that I was, I should accept the presidency because I came from, they used to tease me all the time. Does Louisville have an airport? Yeah, because it was so small. But, you know, he swore me in. Two weeks later, it was a devastation here in this country. Katrina hit. I was the first African American to go into the Gulf Coast region. And I had to go for a number of reasons. One, to protect the, the interests of African Americans in the Gulf Coast. Money was flowing in from everywhere. So to get their attention, I graded our president, George Bush. And I graded him very, very low because people were coming to me needing help. They couldn't turn to anybody else. And when I came there, and at that particular time, Franklin Raines was president of Fannie Mae the largest secondary lender in the world. Billions of dollars. He was an African American. So, I called the Congressional Black Caucus and every lending institution in this country. And we met at the National Press Club. Now to get into the National Press Club, it takes about thirty dollars or $40,000 just to get in. Yeah. And I called all of those people. We didn't have a dime. But when I, when I was, came in as president, I, was, I had a deficit. So we were at the National Press Club. We had Chase. We had everybody. And I had them all to get up and lock hands together, lock on. And during that period of time, I didn't know, but I was getting subpoenaed by the White House to come and talk to President Bush. So basically, you made George Bush angry and he sent him a <laughs> I'm glad you said okay, that. Okay, I said that. <laughs> so when I got to, um, to the White House, of course, I had to honor the uh, subpoena. So I went to the White House, and I'll never forget you know, we had a young lady, uh, she was my chief aide, and uh, her name was Renee. Uh, she's out of Houston, Texas. And she was just historic, she was crying. I stopped the car, I said, look, sometimes you only get one chance to make a difference right. in this world. So, and I told her to just, you know, suck it up and we're gonna make a difference. I didn't know. We went into that White House. I'll never forget it. He was introducing everybody, George Bush, was introducing everybody, and then uh, he got to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he started, I said, Mr. President, I am Clifford Turner the first African-American to go into the Gulf Coast. And then I explained to him why I was there. I stopped him, yeah. And I told him that I have a very concerned interest about the way African-Americans were treated in the Gulf Coast. And I'm the one that had to sit in that airport when they shut the airport down. Yeah. And could nothing get out, I get in. And I spent a whole day in that airport. So I'm here for one reason, and that is we have got to do something. It's a collective effort, including you, Mr. President, and myself. And he said, well, Mr. Mr. Turner, I knew. And I know we've done our due diligence on you. Yeah. So I didn't have any problems with that. And I told him that, yes, that's the reason why I am here. And we went on 
And make a long story short, that's when he committed to $3 billion from Fannie Mae into the Gulf Coast. Yeah. So I was very proud of that. Uh, but that was an interesting point because one, the commitment didn't mean anything if you weren't prepared to be able to utilize and access that. So I had to get out and get out quickly and mobilize all of those affiliates that was a part of that national organization and go in and start training people, getting people to understand the necessity and it had to been done yesterday. All right guys, stay with us. We're just gonna take a little break and when we come back, I've got some more information for you. I'm gonna make sure that you are in the know. Little girls, little boys, veterans, children of all ages. Why not West Louisville? Why not? Why not West Louisville? What is biotechnology? And simply biotechnology is the marriage of biology and technology. We say we need economic development. Why not West Louisville? 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 All right, guys, we've come to the end of our time together. But I enjoyed hanging out with you, and I'm so thankful that you tuned in to Kickback Chats. So I need you to do me a favor. Connect with me on social media. Make sure that you stay up to date on what we're doing so that you do not miss one episode of Kickback Chats. Thank you for tuning in, and know that I love you guys.